Okay, you done. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and ding, round two, you've had a prescription change. Let me cut you some new lenses for your Ray-Ban 5301, size 51. Now I'm going to illustrate on color number 5142 because you have a different color, but I'm just going to use this color because it was in stock. What color is this? It is color 5142, which is the striped brown, but these will fit into brand new frame here. These will fit into your frame, so I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses and put this frame into the tracing element of my Santanelli LE1000 Patternless Edger. It is going to trace the shape of your right lens and then move over and trace the shape of your left here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everybody loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You're just disappointed with me, I mean, but the quality is good, but me, not so much. Okay, so it's done tracing that. I'm going to pull up the shape of your frame on the computer. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance of 59. You are 29.5 in both eyes for a total of 59. This is a polycarbonate lens. I'm cutting on the soft cycle because of the anti-glare, and this is a plastic frame. So these are your Transition 7, Signature 7 Transitions Gray with Crizol anti-glare coating. I will be sending them to you in these packs. And I've highlighted, there's two ways you can write a prescription in plus cylinder and in minus cylinder. And I highlighted that. Let me put an R for right and an L for left. And I'm glad you're bilingual because I do not know Hebrew. So I'm gonna pull off the little sticker here. I'm gonna put your prescription in the lensometer, which is plus 125 and minus 25 at 125. So I'm gonna spin the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 125. I'm gonna put the plus power at plus one and a quarter and I'm gonna put your lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clear. I'm gonna put a dot on each lens and I'm gonna darken those dots so you can see them at home. And that gives me a 180 meridian, a flat line that I can line everything up with and make sure your lens is oriented just right. And don't worry, that is ink. I'm not bleeding. If I was bleeding, you would hear a lot of crying because I'm a big sissy boy. Okay, so left eye is plus two and a quarter, minus a quarter at 30. Spin the axis wheel to 30. And the power drum to plus two and a quarter. Put your lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Check your astigmatism correction of the one step. And let's put some lens dots on these lenses. Dot, 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 and an L. So, I can do better than that for an L just so I know what it is. So, as just like before, I'm going to put this block onto your lens while it's cutting. So I'm going to put this into my blocker, peel away the little sticker, revealing the sticky side. And I'm going to line this up and stamp that down. I'm putting what I have is an optical crosshair, if you will. And I'm using those dots to line it up this way and this way. So let me get this one lined up just perfectly, and then we'll begin cutting your lenses. And we're good there. And because of the anti-glare coating, I'm going to put one more sticker on the back of your lenses because that anti-glare makes your lens a hydrophobic surface, meaning that it hates water and it's extra slippery. So I'm going to put this little sticker on the back so it does not slip while it is cutting. And you know, if I knew I was going to invite people over, I would have cleaned up a little bit. So let me do that. Let me get all this optical sawdust out of here, which I should have done quicker, but hey, I was being lazy. There, does that look cleaner now? Now they got a company coming over. Okay, so the calipers are tracing the concave side of the lens, which is closest to your eyelashes, and now it's gonna move over and trace the convex side. The cutting wheel, I know you've seen this before, Edon, but I'm assuming there's people who haven't seen this. So I'm explaining the cutting wheel is down here on the left. It's that lighter color wheel. It's like a heavy grit sandpaper. It's gonna grind away your polycarbonate material. This wheel in the center is what's gonna put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door while this is cutting, but for now I just want you to see as your Transition 7 with Grisal Alizé touches down on the cutting wheel. 
So your prescription has changed. It now reads your right eye now needs plus one and a quarter, minus a quarter at 125. Your left eye reads plus two and a quarter, minus a quarter at 30. On the packet you will see where I've highlighted for your right eye, the R being right, plus one and a quarter, minus a quarter at 125. Your left eye being the L, plus two and a quarter, minus a quarter at 30. And while that is cutting, where is my red Sharpie? There it is. These are being cut for your Ray-Ban 5301, size 51. And these are your RX with Transition 7 and Crizol. Don't ask me why I capitalized Crizol, but I didn't. I didn't do the rest. Well, that's what you get. I told you, people are disappointed in me. The quality's there. You're just stuck with me. How's that for a little schwarf I was able to peel off while that's cutting? So yeah, I spent nine months in Israel. I spent six months, six and five months actually at Kibbutz Kutura back in 94, I believe it was. And after spending about five months there, I went and studied for three months at uh, Or Sameach there in Jerusalem. But I found out it's not for me, so I came home. Plus, I was in love and I'd never been that away from home that long and I was just homesick and ready to come home. So I packed it all up and came home. Everyone thought I would turn around and make Aliyah and move back, but it just didn't happen. So that way I could stay here and cut lenses for you. I knew this day would come many, many years later. But the good thing is I still keep in touch with all my friends who I met over there, the other volunteers on the kibbutz. They are all over the world and thanks to Facebook, we all keep in touch. And none of us work as hard as we did. You know, we have a large Hispanic community here in America that do some of the migrant worker jobs and the lower paying factory jobs. And I sympathize with them because I know what it was like being a, a migrant farm worker in another country. I worked eight hours a day and got paid one dollar. Now, after three months being in the country, I got a 50% raise. I was actually making a dollar fifty a day. You know, sure, it's not a much, but still, hey, a 50% raise after three months? Who else can claim that out of job? So, it's almost done. I just want to make sure that the rough edges are now off of the edge of your lenses. So, I'm going to back to the handstone which is completely flat. I can put my hand on it while it's running. It just uses friction and I'm using, I'm wiping away your optical sawdust, which is called Schwarf. I clean that off the edge of your lens with my thumbnail and then I wipe it on the floor because I am a professional. Kids don't try this at home. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess. Still not big enough. I mean, small enough, it's still too big. So I'm gonna take a 10th of a millimeter off your lens and hit retouch. The right size always takes me a little bit longer. Once I get the size correct, then I'll flip over and cut the left lens. I always start a little bit larger, then work my way down. You can always cut more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. And then I'm gonna show you your lenses darkening. Yeah, so I got paid a dollar a day, and back then I used to smoke cigarettes. And I would take my day's pay of one dollar, and I would buy a pack of cigarettes. And they were the worst rock gut pack of cigarettes you could find. That's what they gave to the prisoners there in Israel. That's how bad they were. But when you got paid a dollar a day, that's what I smoked back then. I quit in 99, so it's been just about 15 years since I've smoked. Best thing I ever did, but back then I was young and dumb. Now I'm just old and dumb. That's the difference between me now and then.
I remember a little bit of Hebrew. I remember being able to say Lila Tov for good night. That's about all I can remember. Out it comes. Dry your lens off. Back to the safety bevel, back to the handstone, back to scraping this off real quick. And this time I'm just going to drop it straight onto the floor. I'm eliminating the middleman. Why even put it on the counter? Okay, so let's see if this fits now. I'm going to tuck it in. And this is what you need to do when you get your new lenses. And I'll show you how to pop them out. But for now, when you put in the new ones, tuck it in at the outside corner closest to you and I have the frame facing upwards and I'm working on the side closest to me I'm not trying to reach over and do this I tuck it in the side closest to me then using my thumbs I press down at the nose and it snaps right in perfectly so let's flip this over and cut the left and hit start just like before the calipers are going to come down and trace the shape of your left lens onto your prescription lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out. Round and round it traces. Where's the cutting wheel down there on the left? Camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. And of course, these lenses, just like before, aspheric polycarb, they are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your, for your eyes now. So I'm going to take this block off. And I'm going to pull this blue sticker off. It's no longer needed. I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to, where's your prescription? Where is your prescription? 125. So the axis wheel goes to 125. Put your prescription in right above that red dot. And I'm reading plus one and a quarter, minus a quarter at 125. So we're dead on there. I will check your left lens. now. To take your old lenses out, now that your prescription has changed, you turn the frame downward like this with the two temples facing upward. It's always with your thumb, it's always at the nose. So I'm right-handed, I grab the frame by my left hand and using my right thumb, and I place my left thumb on the back of my right, I push outward, out comes your lens in order to put it in, tuck it in at the outside corner, and then press down with your thumbs. Now another thing I do, I'll slow it down, again I grab it with my left hand, but I use my knuckles to kind of pull back on the frame and torque it, you're not going to hurt your frame. So at the same time I'm pulling back, I press my thumb there, put my fingers down and with this thumb, press outward. Out comes your lens. But what I'm going to do when I ship to you this time, I'm going to put your right lens in this wrapper and I'm going to seal it up in here and it will be protected. Nothing will happen to your lens on the way, and of course, especially since it's unbreakable, but, and I've worn the red dot off, so let me put that red dot back on there. Is it gone? It is gone. So let me put this there. I'm going to move it around until I find the optical center just perfect. And let's put another red dot on your lens, and this time I will darken it again. There we go. That is your optical center. That red dot's going to be directly in front of your pupil. So it is done cutting, it's just putting the bevel onto the lens now. Out comes the left lens. Back to drying your lens off. Back to smoothing off those rough edges. Back to using my thumbnail. 
scrape it off, drop it right onto the floor. It's snowing, it's snowing. It is now 7.57 on Tuesday, May 6th, and it's not 51 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina. My new Samsung 2 watch is not communicating with my note phone that says that, oh, I got a new message, it's from the wife. Um, she says we got to put the cat medicine on when I get home. This is exciting stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's 81 degrees in my hometown, not 51 degrees. I'm getting a new phone tonight. My Samsung Note 3 is messing up, so they're replacing it. So, anyone else out there, if you're in my contacts list, if you text me or call me, you're automatically de deleted. Your phone's not supposed to do that, right? Okay, so that's why they're sending me another one. So, again, I've put it in at the corner, and I've rotated. So this is the left lens. I bring it towards me. I tuck it in at the outside corner closest to me, then using my thumbs, press down at the nose. It snaps in perfectly. So, let me take this block off pull that sticker off and that red dot's not dark enough so let me darken that some more and let me inspect this I'm gonna spin the axis wheel back to 30 and this reads plus two and a quarter minus a quarter at 30 so I'm gonna put that red dot in and I'm getting plus two and a quarter minus a quarter at 30 now let's see if I can use my post-it note to measure and I'm gonna put the zero on your right lens over here when I hold it up we should be getting 59 on that left lens that's a total of 59 millimeters so that PD is perfect I do want to clear those red dots off of your lenses and let's go ahead and activate them meaning let's turn them dark these are the new Transition 7, and by the way, I watched that video, and yes, I don't think the Transition 7 are out yet. I mean, the, with the green hue to them, as soon as they are, we'll get that to you in your next frame. So these are your lenses, which are virtually clear indoors. I'm going to put them under a very strong ultraviolet light in my little Transitions box. Hit the button, and as you will see, all Transition lenses will turn dark on day one, give them two weeks. They're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. Now it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for them to turn dark for the first time. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. They do work better in slightly cooler temperatures. I know you're in Israel near Haifa and it gets very hot there. When it gets into the mid 90s to the upper 90s and 100, they just don't get as dark as they do when it's like 85 degrees or lower than that. You know, you're miserable, they're miserable. No one wants to work that hard when it's that hot. So they will work perfectly outdoors. They will not work behind a traditional windshield because your windshield absorbs all the sun's ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack or your upholstery doesn't rot. If you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken, just not behind the windshield of a traditional car. That is that. That is your transition lenses turning dark, your transition 7 with Crizal Alizé. I'm going to go ahead and pop these out and get these ready for shipping. This is your left lens. I'm going to wipe all my fingerprints off. And they will continue to lighten while I work on them. Wipe all the fingerprints off both lenses so you can't turn me into the FBI and collect that big reward that's out for me. So this is your right lens. I'm going to tuck it in the right packet. I'm going to go ahead and protect it a little bit more and put it inside one more foam sleeve. Fold that up and now put this in here. I'm going to do the same thing for your left lens. Put it inside the transitions packet that they sent it to me in. And again, I've highlighted the prescription in minus cylinder instead of plus, so you can see that it is your new prescription. Put this in the foam packet, fold that over again. Even though these are unbreakable lenses, I'm still going to protect them for shipping. And that is that. Just follow the instructions that I showed you to pop them into your black frame, not the striped brown. If anyone else out there has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or just hit the contact me button on the website. Eden, I'm glad you gave me a second chance to make some lenses for you. If I can be any more help in the future, please don't hesitate to email. I'll be here for you at, at your service. Everyone else out there, I hope you got the chance to enjoy seeing how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.